Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And today I thought I'd give you a little tour of all the hanging plants I've currently got in my collection. I've been making hangers like crazy recently, so I thought I would take you through, show you them all, talk a little bit about them, and yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So as you can see, I've got quite a lot of hanging plants. I'm just gonna actually grab a chair so that I can stand up and show you. But starting at this end, the first one is a lipstick plant. This is an Aescananthus marmoratus. And I got this one from, I think it was Finden Garden Centre in one of my Houseplant Tour UK episodes. And oh my goodness, if you look at that clip of when I first got it and you look at it now, it has grown so, 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 so much. And I just, I just love its leaves. Like if you look at the pattern on the underside, they're just so, so, so beautiful. And it's, yeah, as I say, it's just filled out so much. And it's, it's definitely been a very, very, very fast grower. Like when I first got it, I kind of, I did have a lipstick plant years ago and I did think that it might be quite slow and yeah, it's it's been very, very quick. And I'm really hoping that at some point soon it's going to give me some lovely flowers. But yeah, I just love it. I, as you guys know, because I've spoken about it before, I'm so obsessed with texture in plants and like having like, for example, like the, t the different textures here. Like I just love having lots of, lots of lovely textures and colours hanging down. But yeah, so that is, that's that one. And then this one is, I think it's a Rapsilis bacifera. And this one I got in B&Q uh, very, very, very cheaply off their rescue shelf about, probably about a year ago. And when I first got it home and I took it out of its pot, it was just, it was like sludge. It had such bad root rot and I was so worried about it. And I was like, oh my goodness. I was like, is it even going to be savable? And as you can see, it's definitely been savable. And again, this is one that's been really, really fast. I did have it in my north facing basement bedroom for a while and it wasn't really doing a huge amount, but since I've had it in this room, which obviously gets really good light, it's just burst into action and it's got so much new growth. Like, look at those little pom pommy bits. It's so adorable. But yeah, so that's that one. And then here I've got a Skindapsis argoreus and oh my goodness, I just, I love Skindapsis so much and I just love the colour of the leaves and the texture, they're so, 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 so velvety. And actually I got this one as cuttings, rooted cuttings at the plant swap that I went to a few months ago. And I, I've, I've had Skindapsis cuttings before and unless I've actually propagated them myself, a lot of the time they haven't done very well, they failed. and. I hadn't got this type of skin to my collection and I was really, really worried that it might not take, that it might not do very well. And it's done brilliantly. And actually it's it's been quite fast. Like some of the growth down here is getting quite mature now. As you can see, it was quite small for a little while, but yeah, it's just so, so, so beautiful. Also, you can't really tell at this time of day, but when it catches the light, those little kind of silvery speckly bits are just so gorgeous. And then, okay, so this one, as you can see, this one isn't actually technically hanging at the moment, but it was a hanging plant until recently. This is my massive Hartley philodendron and just the weight of this plant, I didn't think it was fair to hang it along the top there in my mum's house because it would probably have brought the roof down, but it's, it's just so gorgeous. And my plan is hopefully when I move house, I'd really love to get the vines kind of climbing up the ceilings and yeah, just kind of, I, I love it when I see that in people's houses, it just kind of helps to give it a really beautiful jungly vibe. So that is what I'm hoping to do with this one. But oh my goodness, this one is so, as you can probably tell, so ridiculously fast growing. Uh, and yeah, I just love it. It's just a, it's just a great plant. But then up here above it, let me get this one down actually. So this is a variegated string of pearls that I again got as cuttings. I think I got about three or four little strands of them and it grew really really long but it was looking quite kind of sparse and leggy because I didn't have that many cuttings so in one of my propagation videos I think about a month ago I did take some more cuttings I put them in water did I put them in water or did I put them straight in the soil I can't remember actually I think I think maybe I did some in soil and some in water but as you can see it is really 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 filling out now filling out the pot and Hopefully it's going to be looking lovely and full at some point soon because it's just so gorgeous. Like the variegation on those little pearls is just so, so, so pretty. And as I said before, just like 
texture. Like I love the texture of this plant so much. It's so kind of bobbly and cheeky and it's just, it makes me happy. It makes me happy to look at. So yes, right. And moving, moving along here, this plant, I get a lot of questions about. This one's been in the background of quite a lot of my videos in the last few months. It's Elipismium bolivianum, and I always just call it the head of hair plants because it kind of just looks like very long, dreadlocky hair. <laughs> but it's just, it's such a, such a gorgeous plant. It's actually a hanging cactus, and for a cactus, it is so fast growing. Like, when I first got this plant, it was kind of, I think probably about there, it wasn't really pouring out of the pot in the same way that it is at the moment. And if you look down here, I mean, whoa, some of its growth has got so, so, so long. And yeah, I just love it. It's beautiful. I really don't do a lot to this plant, to be completely honest. Like I water it maybe once every three or four weeks, I would say. I pretty much let its soil completely dry out. So if you're looking for a low maintenance plant that is quite fast, then I would definitely, definitely recommend this one. Also, just look at all that new growth at the top. I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with that. Like, I don't know if it's going to continue to grow upwards or if at some point it's going to fall down. I'm not sure, but yeah, it's just gorgeous. And then next to it here, this one, this is a Hoya croniana super silver. And I was totally, totally wrong about this plant. So when I first got this, I thought that it was going to be quite slow growing. I don't know why I thought that. Like, I think I thought my other croniana had been quite slow, which I think I was probably also wrong about looking at some of its growth now, which I will show you in a minute. But this one, oh my goodness, like it was only a few strands when I got it and now you can't even see the pot and it's giving me so much new growth. It's just absolutely beautiful and I just love the colour and the little speckles, the like splashy bits on its leaves. And like, look at that little half moon leaf. Isn't that so cute? Um, but yeah, I'm kind of debating with myself at the moment whether or not to just let it keep trailing or to maybe take some like take some of the longer bits like that and propagate them and just kind of let it grow at the same length. I don't know. I also know that Hoyas do really well on trellises and I have got it as a hanger at the moment, but maybe I'll put it on a trellis at some point. I'm I'm not sure. I just I love having it hanging there. I just love the colour of it next to next to all the other leaves and I just think it looks really, really, really pretty. But then this is my regular string of pearls and this one, oh my goodness, this is like an all time favourite for me. It's a really common plant. It's so easy to propagate. It's really cheap to buy nowadays. And I just love it again, similar to the variegated string of pearls up there. Where is it? There, that one. But yeah, it's just, it's just so cheeky and bobbly and I just think it's great. Oh, Oops, I just knocked one of its little bubbles off, sorry. I did actually repot this plant into a smaller planter recently, which is something that I really don't do very often. But when I first got this plant, it was in one of those really kind of tall planters. And I took it out to have a look at the roots because some of the pearls were kind of going a bit yellowy. And its root system was so small and there was so much soil beneath it. So I thought I'll put it in a smaller pot and Hopefully its roots will be able to kind of spread and develop a little bit more, will be less prone to root rot. And since I've done that, it's just, it's really just burst into life. It's doing so, so, so well. It's also, I don't know if you can really tell, I'm not standing on the chair at the moment, um, but it's starting to kind of fill the pot back here as well. So when it, when it fully fills it, then I think I'll move it up, gradually move it up a pot size. But yeah, I just think it's beautiful. And then here, so this is a golden pothos, which is very, 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 very long. Uh, and this is one that I actually grew myself from cuttings. Years ago, I started this plant and it's also given me so many babies over the years. Like I've chopped and propagated it so many times. And it's just, again, a really common, really cheap to buy one. But I just, I don't really think you can beat a pothos. I think they're just the best plants ever and also down here since i brought it out of my bedroom and brought it into this room so it's getting kind of brighter light more heat its leaves have started to become really quite big and mature and the variegation on some of them is just like look at that isn't that just so 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 pretty i love this plant i literally just propagate this one in water it is the easiest one in the world and i've actually got another one of its babies over there that i'll show you in a minute but yeah, that is that one. And then moving up here, I've got a Hoya linearis, which is another one that I got at the plant swap as a rooted cutting. And it was pretty well established when I got it, to be honest, but it was it was literally only these bits here. It looks quite thin and straggly. And I actually contemplated chopping it to propagate and then plant back into the same pot to kind of fill it out a bit. But as you can see at the top, it's kind of done that itself without me doing anything. Like it's giving me so much beautiful new growth around here. and. 
as I say again, I'm gonna bang on about it with all of these, but just like the texture, like I just love, I love how kind of unusual and just kind of, I don't know, gorgeous it is. It's also, I mean, oh my goodness, it is the most fragile plant in the world. You literally just have to like bend it slightly the wrong way and it will snap, but it's so, so soft and you can't really, can't really get the full benefit on camera. Yeah, you can kind of see the kind of fine little hairs, but it is so unbelievably soft and I just love it. I think it's a great plant and yeah, I'm gonna be very, very, very happy when it kind of starts to trail down more and hopefully becomes really gorgeous and full. But then this one, a texture again, this one is my fishbone cactus and I just love this plant. This is another cactus that's been so fast growing for me. It was in my cabinet for a little while because these ones actually quite like humidity compared to some other cacti. And when it was in my cabinet, I think it was in about a four centimeter pot or something very, very, very small. And I repotted it into, what is this? Probably kind of a 10 centimeter pot, I'd say. And yeah, I took it out of the cabinet. I just let it get some light from here and it has just gone absolutely crazy. I I don't know why, like I didn't have this plant in my collection for so long and I've had this one now for probably about eight months, I'd say, but I'm just absolutely obsessed with it. And whenever I go to garden centers or houseplant shops and I see the big ones kind of tumbling out of their pots, I'm like, oh, I really want one. But seeing how quickly this one's grown, I'm like, okay, maybe I just hold out and wait and wait for her to start doing that. As you can tell, like down here, she started to do that a little bit, but yeah, no, love her. She's great. Um, oh, I'm gonna fall off my chair. I'm gonna have to move around in a minute. <laughs> but this one here is a variegated spider plant and I've showed you it quite a few times before. I propagated this one from my mum's big plant. My mum's got a gorgeous variegated spider plant and I always used to pinch the babies because otherwise she wouldn't know what to do with them. And so yeah, I propagated this one and again had it in my cabinet and it just absolutely, my cabinet did wonders for this plant. It just really, really helped kick it into action and now it's actually quite a quite a mature plant and as you can see it's giving me runners down here so I think I'm gonna get some babies from this one soon which is crazy I still think of this one as a very young immature plant but oh she's got another one up there as well I didn't even notice that uh, but yeah she's obviously not that young and immature anymore she's she's gorgeous the only thing is that I think actually the spot I've got her in I think she'd do better over there at the moment because here although it doesn't get direct sun it is really 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 bright and I think probably a little bit too bright for her at the moment and I only say that ah, can you tell on camera I only say that just because she's not looking quite as green and vibrant as she was before she's kind of got like a bluey tinge to her like she's faded a bit and that doesn't really bother me to be honest I I love the bluey plants but I know it's not kind of her at her prime so yeah maybe I will move her at some point soon but yeah I'm just gonna move the chair around the other side and then up here, I've got a little Syngonium Pixie. I can't really get that close to it, but this one, this one's actually not doing great at the moment. It's in, I know I've decorated the pot, but that's a terracotta pot that it's in. And I think it needs repotting and I think it definitely needs to be in something bigger. And yeah, I got home from holiday recently and that one was not looking good at all. It was all dry and cracked and I had to give it a very big chop back. And as you can see, she's still not looking great. So. I would say she needs some attention. And I know also Syngoniums don't tend to be known for being hangers. Like, I don't really know why I put her in a hanging pot. I just thought she looked quite nice in that. But yeah, needs attention. We'll come back to it in another video and give you an update. But then this one here, this, ah, oh, this plant brings me so much joy. It's a Peperomia Hope and it's just got the most beautiful succulent leaves that just, I don't know why, do you know what I mean? Like it's just a really happy looking plant. And oh my goodness, it's been so, so, so fast growing. I got this one probably only a couple of months ago from a garden centre and it was in probably a pot about that size, if not smaller. It was absolutely teeny tiny. And I included it in my baby plant tour. So you can look back at that to kind of see the comparison if if you would like to see that uh, but since I've potted it up in this it's just I mean it's starting to trail down and it's just doing it so well it's giving me so much new growth as you can see there and I always think of this one as kind of being like a Hoya I don't know why like I know it's a Peperomia but I kind of don't treat it in the same way as some of my other Peperomias like I really do kind of pretty much let this one dry out before I water it again. As you can see, I did have a little accident. I left it in a bowl of water, completely forgot about it, and all of the string got stained, but 
to be honest, it doesn't really, doesn't really bother me that much. And then this one here is, it's a skin dapsis and I can never, never, never remember the name of it. So I'll put the name on the screen, but this one, oh my goodness, similar to the Argaraeus, but this one's got a lot more kind of bluey silver it's just so, so, so pretty. And I know a lot of people say that these ones aren't fast growing. I completely disagree with that. I think this one is so ridiculously quick, but I think the mistake that a lot of people make with this plant is that because it's capable of surviving in lower lights, they think, ah, okay, I'll put it in a kind of low, medium light spot. And then obviously, yes, it is gonna be quite slow. However, as I say, in the room that I'm in at the moment, which gets so much bright and direct light, it is giving me so much new growth and I have chopped this one back several times in the past to propagate as well and it just it always bounces back really well and I'm hoping at some point it will just tumble down I am letting her grow now I I don't think I'm going to take any more cuttings for the time being but if I could get this plant to the same stage as my golden pothos where she just kind of tumbles down I think that would just look so 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 pretty but yeah so that's that one and then this one here is my my standard croniana i showed you my croniana super silver over there but this is just my normal one which is actually i mean i always think of it as being slow growing and i don't know why like i think i've probably had it for about five or six months and it only came with one vine and to be fair it i think maybe it's quicker quicker than i think it is but yeah it's just a really beautiful really really beautiful plant i love its little raindrop leaves and also you might have seen just then but it's trying to flower which also i realize my hands are insanely insanely shaky i haven't had breakfast yet this morning and i've had about three coffees so i'm a bit like oh um but yeah I, I can't believe it's trying to flower like usually that only happens on much more mature hoyas and i i don't really know like i know some people say to chop the flowers off to let the plant conserve its energy if it's quite young but I'm just gonna kind of let her do her thing and see see what happens. I'll chop them back if she's not looking good, but otherwise I would really love to see her flower. I don't think I've ever actually had a cronion that's flowered before, so I would be very interested to see. Um, and then another peperomia here. This is a peperomia prostrata, which is commonly known as string of turtles. And you can see why it's got those beautiful little turtle back pattern on its leaves. It's just so, so, so gorgeous. I would say I treat this peperomia in a very similar way to my peperomia hope that I showed you just there. Like I really do just let it pretty much completely dry out. And I think it's probably ready for a bigger pot, to be honest. This is the same size pot that it came in, although I have obviously popped it into a little terracotta one but yeah I think in order to kind of really encourage some bigger growth and it's really it's really growing at the moment it really wants to give me lots of growth but I think I definitely need to upgrade its soil and give it a bigger pot but yeah I love it I just think it's so adorable and it's just such a beautiful green as well like compared to some of my other ones it's just a really kind of vibrant bright healthy gorgeous green so yeah I love it um, I don't know if you can see in the reflection as well. I'm literally about to stand on the table, but oh, very carefully moving over. This one is a fairly recent addition to my collection. I got this one from Hutch Houseplants in my Houseplant Tour UK episode quite recently. And I've been trying to remember its name and I think it is a Selenserius Werleckii or Werlecki or something like that. And as you can see, it's another hanging cactus. And from what I've researched and from what I gathered when I spoke to the owners when I was there, is that its care needs are very similar as the fishbone cactus over there that I showed you. So yeah, at the moment, I did actually water it this morning, but at the moment, I'm just kind of letting it pretty much dry out and keeping it here nice and bright, very similar to that one again. And it's, I mean, obviously it's really too soon to tell if it's a fast grower or not, but I feel like in the last week and a half, I have noticed some growth. That could just be me being ridiculous. I always am like, my eyes are everywhere on my plants, but yeah, I feel like it's gonna be quite quick. I feel like, as I say, similar to the fishbone cactus, similar to the one that I call the head of hair, the Lepicinium bolivianum, I think it will be quite similar to that. But I will give you an update when I've had a chance to get to know this plant a little bit more, because as I say, it is very early days. And then this little one here, this is another recent addition. This is the one that I got from Fermoy's Garden Centre in Newton Abbott. This is a philodendron micans, and it's a really common philodendron. It's really not, not that expensive to buy here in the UK, but it's, it's a velvet leaf philodendron, and 
I just love them. I, I don't actually have this plant. I think I've had a cutting of it before and to be completely honest, I don't know what happened to that. I think maybe I killed it, but this one is just so, so, so gorgeous. And it's very similar. I mean, obviously they're in the same family, but it reminds me of the Milano Chrysum so, so, so much, which obviously is quite a rare plant. And I love my Milano Chrysum so much. So yeah, this one was also, I think I'm right in saying it was only five pounds, which I thought was amazing. And I know it's got a few little marks here and there on the leaves, but I think once it gets going, it's gonna really fill out beautifully and look really healthy and lovely. So yes, and then up here, another little cheeky one. This is a Peperomia pepper spot. Peperomia pepper spot, that's right. And as you can see, it's literally almost identical to the string of turtles, Peperomia pastrata, apart from the fact that it's not variegated. And it's just really lovely. Again, this is one that I included in my baby plant tour a little while ago. And since then, again, I have potted it up in a bigger pot and it's trailing beautifully now. And I can't wait for this one to come down because in, in case I hadn't mentioned already, I really like the texture of these plants next to each other. So yes, I'm very, very, very excited about that. I just think its little leaves are so adorable and they're so like thick and succulent as well. And with this plant, this is a really good way actually of telling when it needs a water, like because, because it's so full, it's really hard to get your finger into the soil, but I just kind of give its leaves a little squeeze. And if they're feeling quite thin and flat, then I'll usually go ahead and water it again. And if not, I will, I will leave it a few more days. It's also really drought tolerant from my experience. So if you do forget to water every now and again, it's not gonna complain. But then next to it here, is my Pothos Marble Queen. I was gonna say Philodendron then, but it's a Marble Queen Pothos. And this plant, I mean, Pothos in general, I just think are, I just think they're great. And just because they're common, I feel like people were sometimes like, oh, it's just a Pothos. But I'm like, no, I think they're absolutely amazing. And I would honestly fill my house with them if I could. And when I move, I think I will, because look at the variegation on these leaves. It's just, it's just so gorgeous. And as you can tell towards the top of the pot here, she actually wasn't like super, super, super variegated for a Marble Queen, but coming down here to some of her kind of more mature growth as she's, as she's cracking on, it almost looks like snow queen variegation like it's just so beautiful and yeah I, I i haven't actually i don't think taken any cuttings of this plant yet to propagate because i just really want to let her grow i really want to let her hang down maybe trail like i was saying about my hartley philodendron over there maybe kind of get her trailing over some walls at some point or something like that but yeah i think if you want something that maybe looks quite rare is so easy to care for and grows ridiculously quickly then this plant is definitely definitely the one for you it's just it's awesome i love it and then this one here this is a philodendron brazil and this one i mean it's such an easy to care for plant it's really really great but this is one that suffered a bit when i was away on holiday again as i said i did come back to some drama and this one I had completely forgotten to water before I went away, which is not good. Like it is fairly drought tolerant, but I was away for like a week and a half in a heat wave. So as you can see up here, some of her leaves just aren't looking as vibrant. In fact, I kind of feel like I should probably chop that one. Um, yeah, they're just not looking as vibrant and not, not looking as amazing as she could be. But down here, however, look at this, like, she's, she's doing okay. I know, like, I know she'll bounce back and I know she'll be looking healthy again. Ooh. I thought that was a pest then, is it? No, no, go away. I have struggled so much with pests these last few months. So I will be making some videos on that soon because yeah, it's been a bit of a nightmare in this warm weather. But yeah, again, really easy to propagate, really fast growing, really cheap to buy. It's just, it's just a really great plant. And then this one here, I have shown you so many times before because I'm just totally in love with it. This is my Hoya crinkleate, which I just like, look at the abs on those leaves. They're just so beautiful. And similar to my other Hoyas, I mean, they're known as wax plants for a reason, but their leaves are just so kind of sturdy and waxy and robust. It's just such a great, robust plant. And another one that I would say is really great for beginners. It's so easy to propagate if you wanna create new plants for free. It's, yeah, it's just gorgeous. And it's definitely one of my more mature Hoyas compared to some of my others. Like Hoyas can be quite slow growing and this one definitely hasn't been. This one has been, if, I mean, incredibly quick for a Hoya. And as you can see, like all down here, she's given me lovely growth. Also the back of her leaves are so, so, so furry. Like you can't really tell, but they're just so beautifully soft. And 
I just think she's gorgeous. She hasn't flowered at all this year though, however. My mum's also got a crinkle eight, which it's just typical. My mum's is literally in the worst condition, barely ever gets watered and it's flowered like four times and my one, alas, has not just yet, but fingers crossed, fingers crossed I'll get some flowers soon. And then lastly here I've got, so this is in desperate need of a drink by the looks of it. Yeah, oh my goodness, that soil is bone dry. But this is a golden pothos that I got um, as a propagation from my big plants over there that I showed you. So this is one of the babies. And as you can see, I have actually since then, I mean, quite a few times actually, but I have taken some cuttings off this one and she's now given me new plants as well. So technically my one over there is now a grandmother, grandmother to many, many children. Uh, but yeah, I just, again, I love, I love a good pothos. I think they're such gorgeous plants. I think... They just, they're just so, they're just so easy and they're just great for adding like greenery to little corners. They're really good in low light. So you can kind of, you can pretty much pop them anywhere and they'll, they'll do well. So yeah, I love a pothos. But those are the ones, so those are the ones at the moment that I've got in hangers. I've got quite a few trailing plants around there. Like again, various types of hoya and stuff like that. Some philodendrons that I would really like to get into hangers soon. Because as I say, when I move, my house has got completely sloped ceilings and not gonna be a huge amount of space for shelves. So I'm gonna have loads and loads of plants hanging everywhere, hopefully. So yes, those are the ones I've got in hangers at the moment. If you want to see an update video on them, maybe like, I don't know, in a couple of months time or something like that, when I've got more hanging, then I will absolutely do that. Just let me know. But yeah, I really, really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video.